Hello, my name is Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. We're here at beautiful Groton Raceway, a beautiful day. It is April 7th, and uh, riders are having a great time out here participating at Groton Raceway, taking to school. And, uh, a couple of good sessions. I'm gonna, show, uh, I'm gonna show you some of the highlights of this school. Some excellent information in the classroom. We'll show you a little bit on the race trip. But in the next eight or nine minutes, we're going to show you the action from the Groton Raceway Team Chicago School. And I'm also running for the United States Congress. And that website is walkwithdan.com. Walkwithdan.com. Go check out my website and uh, support me as I uh, try to save America or reclaim our future one precinct at a time. Here's where you're going to want to start. Because you can look and look what you're setting up for, right? In this session here, these are all linked together. You do this one right, you can do that one right. You screw this one up, you screw it up the next turn. This whole session can flow all together because you come over the hill. We start out the day with a track walk, and that was Greg Hutchinson with group four. As we see Phil Young and group three on the track, Phil's explaining the different corners and coming back into the pits, it is group one. Let's listen to a few of their comments. For Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, I've been here a couple times, learned a lot of stuff. I learn something new every year, whether it be motorcycle setup or safety wiring, or there's some, always some trick that somebody's going to teach me. It'll look completely Track? different once you put your helmet yeah, on and it, go there's, fast. It, there's a lot more up and down than what you think there is. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. As we see Fran Coke giving some tips to the students in group five. We're gonna head into the classroom with Jeff Morrow, Dave Jackson, Dan Durham, Phil Young, and Bruce Blake. Up here, good signal. Keep that hand up in the air as long as you can. Nobody know what you can um, If you're a little bit off the pace, <laughs> don't be changing your line to accommodate faster riders. Stay on your line. The fast guys are gonna find a way around you. Start changing your line, you're unpredictable, nobody knows what the hell you're doing. So they don't know which way to go, left, right, whatever. So if you're online, everybody's got their, their favorite way they pass people around this track. It all works out. Right? Our debris flag just has a few different moves. We have like, um, we have the turtles, the geese, it could be a chain, knee plucking. We got the guide coast squirrels too, guys, so they will try to run out. They're not scared to run out in front of a bike. They'll play games with you sometimes. They're pretty nuts. So if you see this flag, sometimes they'll even point at the animals if there's an animal because we never know if they're going to run or if they're not. It's not fixed like a knee puck or a chain or something. It ain't going nowhere where the animal will. So sometimes if they're pointing, that just kind of lets you know, kind of pay attention because we've had deer poke out in the woods and a lot of different kinds of animals. And we do have turtles. Please don't try to kick the turtles. They will cut your boot and your foot. Some of them, some of them turtles will get a really big and they're pretty strong turtles. You, uh, if you move at all, in most race organizations, you're going to get a uh, jump start penalty. You're going to see a number board with your number on it. You're going to see a meatball flag. Now, just because you see a meatball flag being waved, always read the number board because it could be for the guy behind you or the guy who's just coming out of turn 10 onto the straightaway. Now, with a meatball flag, it means you go all the way around the racetrack, exit at turn 10 into the hot pits and come and talk to an official. They're going to tell you what's going on why you turn it to the right, tighten it from all up. Turning it to the left loosens it. So the idea with safety wire is the safety wire is always pulling in a direction that's trying to tighten the bolt, which is called a positive safety. A negative safety, if you did it wrong or backwards, would be the safety would be safety wire would be trying to pull the bolt loose, which would be turning it to the left. So that would be negative and that's bad. So you want to go with the positive safety. And I think it's pretty basic for everybody, right? But you can kind of see if the bolt turns to the right, tightens it. Well, that's how the safety wire is coming. It's coming off the right side because as it's pulling, it's trying to tighten the bolt. And then as you pass to the next one, the next bolt, it comes over to the other side. And you just think about it in your head, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And that's what this, what the safety wire again is trying to do. It's trying to pull in that direction. Take the bike and someone balance it. 
and you get on the bike in your racing position, it'll go down, and you wiggle around so you get a nice sag, then get that measure. That is called race sag. Now on a street bike, we call it rider sag. No, screw that rider sag. We call it race sag. It sounds better, right? That dimension needs to be approximately 30% of the total travel of the rear end. Now, total travel has nothing to do with the shock absorber's length as you see it. It's the amount that that swing arm goes up and down vertically. On most sports bikes, that's between five and six and a half inches. What we want to do is to get approximately 30% of that. So most of yours, you'll be dealing around 50 millimeters, between 30 and 50 millimeters, depending on the bike you actually have for your static, uh, for your race setting. Now, here comes the important part. You set it up on your static sag with the spring. If you're shooting for that 30, 35 millimeters in the rear, and it goes to like 55, the spring is too soft. You need a stronger spring. If it doesn't go down far enough, the spring is too stiff. Changing the preload is not going to change the spring rate. All it's going to do is going to say, at this speed, now the spring will work. So now you have to fight through the point up until the speed that you're traveling or the condition that you're going through a corner before the spring works. So you, all you've done is shoot yourself in the foot. You've got to have the right spring. I'm Bill Webb. I took the school a couple of years ago, and it was one of the greatest learning experiences I've had. And I couldn't wait to come back, and I'm enjoying it and learning just on the first time out. My name is Lori Faber, and this is a 1939 Harley WLDR race bike that my husband Tom Faber of Faber Cycle built. And I am trying it out today to practice so he can build me one. So this is a good track day to do it. My name is Dave Bona. I was on my first session out here, first couple laps, felt pretty good. Knock the cobwebs out, still a little bit rusty. Hope to get better. Dave Jones, school's great. Second year I've been here, uh, I've learned a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, school very nice. Yeah, I have a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, my name is Andrew Burry, and it's great. It's a beautiful day, and yeah, great instructors, great class. Nice day. Um, can't wait to get out there and ride hard. I'm here to learn a little bit more about the track, better way around it. Uh, just some get some knowledge from some of the guys that know a little bit more about it than me. So, so far, picked up a few things already and hope to learn more. And now we're going to join Bill Young and the rest of the instructors with group three. Bill reads them off the first group. We divide the students up and then each instructor has about five, six or seven students on board with the Team Bear Helmet Cam Champion Cycle Center in Chicago. Beautiful Grand Raceway second group heads on out. During the second ride on the track, the students will be allowed to pass the instructors we watch Gordon Hamilton lead another group out. And the instructor will have the opportunity to watch the students and after a session, give the students some good constructive criticism. Brandon Griffith takes the last group off. All of these riders are in group three. There are five groups that make up the school, approximately 100 students. We're part of this 19th annual Grot Raceway Team Chicago School. If Phil comes on the front straightaway, he's gonna allow students to pass. And then he'll watch them doing the lap. We head in the first corner at beautiful Groton Raceway, located about 18 miles northeast of Grand Rapids, Michigan, off of Highway 44. The 
besides the road course, Groton Raceway also has a spectacular motocross track. It still follows the student around. Now Gordon Hamilton is coming on the front straightaway, waving a student by. Tucked in behind that student. And Phil watches the student in front of him. They head through the various corners out here at Groton Raceway. Brandon Griffith now coming on the front straightaway. student by so he can follow. In the meantime, Phil Young is caught up with this group. And now we're going to look at Groton Raceway. Each corner, turn one is a very fast right hand. You're coming off that 3,000 foot front straightaway, a couple down shifts, swing the bike wide. You got a tighter right hand, maybe one more downshift. Swing the bike in and set yourself up for turn three, which is an off camber downhill corner. You can come in wide, but stay on the inside. That's where it is the flattest. As you get out to the outside, the track runs away from you. Now the very fast turn four, which leads you to the famous rotten hump. Maybe one down shift, and you run into the S's. Right hand, left hand, right hand. If you get these right, you can pick up some time right here. But this one here, stay on the inside again, because the track is running away from you. As you run into the ball, this is the highest bank corner on the racetrack. And that takes you out to the back 40, two dog legs to the right. Another very fast section on Groton Raceway. When you break up, a couple down shifts, the hairpin is the slowest corner on the racetrack. And that takes you to the uphill. The fill lets another student by. That's a fast right and the very fast left hand onto the 3,000 foot front straightaway that makes up Rock Place for a tractor's layout by E.J. Boston 50 years ago. Started out as a drag strip. This straightaway was the drag strip, and then E.J. added the corner. Special thanks to Groton Raceway, the Fossen family, and the Can-Do Safety Crew. Don't forget, GrotonRaceway.com, GrotonRaceWayMX.com. A great time to be had at Groton Raceway. Go to their website. Don't forget, TeamChicago.tv and WalkWithDan.com. That's the political website.